Hello and welcome to another Trove News video. Today we're going to be looking at an area that could be the world's next exploration hotspot. We're going to be giving a geology overview at the plate tectonic level and a news update for some of the things that have been happening in southern Latin America. So here's a bathymetry map just to set the context for the region. It highlights some geological features such as SDRs here on either side of the margins. Here's the mid-ocean ridge, so this is the spreading center, and you can see transform faulting as well, and large igneous provinces we marked on in these red areas. This is the Wolvis Ridge, and it's because of this igneous province that we had a restricted basin during the early drifting stage, and that is why we have Aptian salt deposits on either side of the margin here. Um, incredibly significant for the oil and gas industry, particularly the pre-salt of Brazil around the Campos Santos Basin. But today we're going to be focusing further south on this margin and we'll be looking at offshore Uruguay, Argentina and a bit onshore actually, and uh, the Falkland Islands. But uh, you'll notice that this continental shelf is much larger than on the opposite margin and we'll uh, suggest some reasons why that might be. But first, we're going to take a look at the conjugate margin and offshore uh, Namibia and South Africa, where there's been huge recent discoveries uh, with Venus and Graf being a conjugate margin. There is the potential for that to occur on the other side of the Atlantic. So the geological context is late Jurassic intercretaceous rifting which is effectively crustal thinning, which is accommodated by normal faults and then intruded by magmatic features. So this is a, a crustal scale, an ion line, and you can see oceanic crust in the west here, transitioning to the continental crust of Africa over in the east here. The continental crust being stretched and thinned until uh, it, it, it transitions to oceanic crust. Thought I'd take a moment just to talk briefly about SDRs that we've mentioned a few times now. And this purple section on this line highlights uh, the SDR domain. So what are SDRs? Well, it stands for Seaward Dipping Reflectors, and they're seen on seismic at the sort of crustal scale, and they are high amplitude reflectors which diverge and increase in dip towards the ocean. They're features of volcanic passive margins. Crust-containing SDRs has similarities to oceanic crust, but with more extrusive volcanics and interbedded sediments. SDRs are associated with the transition from rifting of continental lithosphere into to the drifting stage of C4 spreading. Essentially, SDRs are indicative of transitional crust at volcanic passive margins. So the East Atlantic margin stratigraphy, here we are showing in the geochronostratigraphy in the Jurassic time, we have pre on top of Precambrian metamorphics, the crastine shells and alluvial fluvial sediments on top. This is the pre-rift stage. And then as we enter the rifting stage, um, we see these um, SDRs becoming prevalent, but we continue to have lacastine shales and alluvial fluvial deposits in this region. And then by early Cretaceous, we're into the drifting phase, and here we see open marine shales and then marine shelf clastics and, and alluvial and fluvial deposits and the Aeolian sandstones here in, in the early drifting stage. There seems to be a major unconformity towards the top of the Aptian period. And then uh, this is the same setting all the way until the present day, where we have offshore, we have open marine shells, and uh, from the shelf we have these marine clastic sediments, and due to transgressive and regressive cycles and relating to global sea level and other factors such as sediment supply, you can see that this, this varies. And then whenever sediments sort of uh, build up enough, they can spill over the shelf edge and out onto the slope. And this takes the form of turbidites and mass transport deposits. And this can then in turn be reworked by large scale ocean currents and uh, forms contourites. And this is a similar sequence to what occurred on uh, the west margin that we'll look at next. 
However, there are significant differences, mainly in the geomorphology across the margin. So looking at the southwest Atlantic margin now, and on, on the east there, it was a simple passive margin. However, on this side, it is not so simple, and that's mainly because of the plate tectonics. And so we have the Scotia plate here, which complicates things. This is a gravimetric base map with geotectonic configuration on top. And we're just translating these labels. So you can see in this zone, we have transcurrent sheared continental margin. Um, up here, we have actually an active convergent plate margin. Here, there's mixed sheared and convergent at this boundary. And uh, up here and to the north, we have a more simple volcanic rifted continental margin. But it's this shearing effect that has really extended the shelf for this uh, region. And on the right here, we're just showing the modern day basins. We'll move on to talk about those next. So where are the main oil and gas occurrences? Well, hydrocarbons are currently produced in the New Quinn Basin, the Gulf of San George Basin, and the Malvinas and Astral Basin. There are also some discoveries in other locations, like uh, in the North Malvinas Basin and in the East Malvinas Basin. Areas we're going to cover today, though, we're going to talk about developments in uh, New Quinn Basin, the Vaca Murta. We're going to look at offshore Uruguay and northern Argentina. There's an upcoming ultra deep water well here. And then we'll talk about some developments that seem to be making a bit of progress for northern and eastern Malvinas basins. But first, if you'd like to know more about fields and discoveries in the South Atlantic, you can look to Trove. This is a subscription service that we run for our database that we maintain and update. It is an excellent source of analogues, looking at both sides of the Atlantic margin and indeed the world, covering every field and discovery with detailed geological information for insight and clear decision making. And now onto an area update. Starting off with offshore Argentina. Now we're up in the north area, a block called CAN 100 of the Argentine Basin. The license is operated by Equinor of Partners Shell and YPF. Drilling was given approval back in July of this year and is said to be prospective resource of 1.1 billion barrels of oil equivalent in water depths of around 1,500 meters and TD is expected to come in at around 4,000 meters. Argerich is Argentina's first ever ultra deep water well, and it's particularly exciting given the Namibia conjugate analogues in Venus and Graf. Here's a map from S&P Global showing the planned location of the well. You can see there's been some shows from previous wells in the Colorado basin, but this is the first one in the ultra deep water of the North Argentina basin. S&P Global have categorized this well as a HIW, high impact well, and it's going to be spudded late 2023. You can also see on this map, Raya 1, and when it was drilled, at the time, it was the deepest water depth in which a well had been drilled. Um, that's highlighting the Uruguay area, and we'll move on to that next. Moving to look at Uruguay, and news is that Challenger Energy has just been awarded the final unlicensed offshore Uruguay block, uh, off three here. Challenger Energy already operates off one, and in May of this year, it completed an assessment for three prospects in the block, Teru Teru, Ana Pero, and Lenteja, with a combined prospective resource of 1.99 billion barrels of oil equivalent. Here's a summary slide of one of those prospects. Feel free to pause the video to take a look. Other companies that now have acreage offshore Uruguay include Shell, APA Corporation, and YPF. License commitments are mainly for seismic studies. However, off six here, with APA Corporation, I have a firm well commitment to drill within four years. And if you'd like to find out more information for offshore Uruguay, Take a look at our previous video. More information on the prospects for offshore Uruguay. These have all been categorized and standardized within Trove. Get in touch to find out more. Moving now to onshore Argentina, and we're going to look at the Vaca Murta, which is Spanish for dead cow, and this is within the New Quinn Basin. 
This area has become critically significant for the Argentine economy. The Vaca Murta is a late Jurassic to early Cretaceous shell formation. It's the world's second largest shale gas resource and fourth largest shale oil resource. And many shale oil and shale gas developments are ongoing, with Reistad predicting 400 new wells to come on annually in the coming years. YPF have stated that the Argentina consumes around 1.5 TCF a year and with the Vacamurta has reserves for now 200 years. However, plans are in fact to export this and they're targeting 3 TCF a year to be exported for decades to come. Looking now at this map from Wellagents, you can see Vaca Murta here, Andes are here, and uh, one of the challenges for this region is infrastructure to capitalize on the resources. So phase one of a pipeline, uh, the Nestor Karichna gas pipeline has just been completed it has a capacity currently of around 388 million cubic feet a day. Upgrades are being made to this and so the capacity in Q1 of 2024 is targeted to be over 780 million cubic feet a day. Moving now to look at the Falklands. First, for the area in the north, some license activity took place in May of 2023. JHI Associates have signed a license acquisition agreement with Argos Resources for PL001. This is in a block just to the west of the um, more well-known sea lion discovery. The license PL001 contains Little Blue 1 and Galapagos 1, both wells were drilled by Hess and reported as having shows. And now looking south of the Falklands, Darwin is a gas condensate discovery from uh, drilled in 2012 in PL018. It's Aptian aged 22% average porosity in a couple of tilted fault blocks. 3.2 TCF gas initially in place and 462 million barrels of oil equivalent gross contingent and prospective resource. It's at a water depth of 2011 meters and discovery well TD'd at 4,876 meters. You can see from this image here, very clear tilted fault blocks, here's Darwin East and Darwin West. Darwin East is where the discovery well was drilled, and you can see Darwin East here, and then Darwin uh, West, which is technically the prospective resource, is here, but seismic amplitudes conform very well to structure. So it's a very well understood discovery. Borders and Southern are proposing a phased development scheme with initial development of Darwin East, with two producers and one gas injector. Project financing uh, and finding a farm in is ongoing, but the company released a press release in June saying that discussions with potential farm in partners are taking place. So to summarize, Argentina's first ultra-deep water well is spudding in Q4 of this year, hoping to mimic the success of the conjugate margin. The Uruguay license round is now completed and they've successfully awarded all their offshore blocks. The Vaca Murta is extremely busy with major infrastructure upgrades and many wells to be drilled in the coming years. And there's some development progress and license exchange activity happening for the Falklands Islands, both to the north and the south. But to find the technical information that you need and to stay on top of activity in this region, the Trove database is the tool that you need. Please get in touch for a demonstration. If you found this interesting, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you back on our channel soon. Bye for now.